Are fake sweeteners safe? It's important to know which artificial sweeteners are safe and which ones are not because some are downright dangerous. We all know that sugar isn't a health food, so a lot of us will reach for artificial sweeteners like aspartame and Splenda, reach for natural you know, sugar substitutes like stevia, but I reach for toxic sugar substitutes for years, and I wanna make this video to help you avoid the same mistakes that I did. The health impact of consuming artificial sweeteners over time it can be shocking because people do consume uh, artificial sweeteners in food products some every day, some all day long, and they do it for decades thinking they're making a healthier choice than consuming sugar. I also wanna bust some myths about weight loss and consuming artificial sweeteners because there's some research that shows that people that consume artificial sweeteners actually end up consuming more food at the end of the day. And that's because of how these sweeteners kind of act on your hormones in your body. So when you're consuming an artificial sweetener, your body sends signals that you're consuming something sweet that doesn't know anything but sugar and that will cause your insulin levels to rise. And the insulin is a hormone that tells your body to store fat. So you have this rise and then you have a crash later which lowers your blood sugar and that will trigger you to then eat more food. So in the long run, you're not really doing yourself any favor by consuming artificial sweeteners when it comes to your weight and the research supports this. So not only are artificial sweeteners not helping you to lose weight, they can also have a lot of other very negative health impacts that we're gonna talk about in today's video. Fake sweeteners are used in 6,000 different food products. So they're in sodas, they're in drinks, they're in candy, they're in gum, they're in yogurts, so many different products, even toothpaste. Fake sweeteners are everywhere. And so don't you think that you should know what fake sweeteners are doing to your body on a cellular level? So sit back, relax, put your science hats on, and let's find out how safe these fake sweeteners really are. So number one is sucralose, it's known as Splenda, and sucralose is an organochloride, and in fact, a lot of pesticides are also organochlorides. But just because Splenda is an organochloride doesn't mean that it's toxic, but it should raise an eyebrow or two. Sucralose is a synthetic additive created by chlorinating sugar. In this five-step patented process, you have three chlorine molecules that are attached to a sugar molecule, and thus sucralose is born. The results of the chemical structure of sucralose is almost identical to that now banned pesticide, DDT. So I don't know about you, but I don't want any DDT in my green tea. No thanks, I'm gonna pass. So Splenda does have its own host of side effects. So Splenda has been shown to increase migraine headaches. Other reported side effects include muscle aches, stomach cramps and diarrhea, bladder issues, skin irritation, dizziness and inflammation. So, hmm, seeing some patterns here. Only two clinical trials were completed and published before the FDA approved sucralose for human consumption. And those two studies had a total of 36 subjects. Other research has shown that sucralose can have a lot of devastating health effects. It can cause shrinking of the thymus gland, which is an important immune system regulator, and liver and kidney dysfunction. And a recent study by Duke University showed that sucralose negatively impacted gut bacteria, which is needed for a healthy immunity and to maintain a proper weight and proper digestion as well. So number two is stevia. So stevia is the most natural option here. I eat stevia myself and uh, I use stevia in my coffee every morning. It's fantastic. I use it in my green tea. So stevia is an herb that's native to Paraguay and Brazil, and it's 300 times more sweet than sugar. And stevia comes in many forms. It comes in powders and liquids. I prefer the liquids because they have less of a bitter taste. So some of the powdered stevias can have a lot of like filler additives that make them a little bit more bitter. So I prefer the liquid. So number three is aspartame. So that's sold are the brands NutraSweet, Equal, and Spoonful. And I have a bone to pick with aspartame, okay? And so here's why, so get ready for this. There are more problems with aspartame than all the other food additives combined, so I definitely would avoid this one. So when it comes to aspartame, there have been over 10,000 reports of the FDA for various adverse reactions, including even death. 
As for them, accounts for over 75% of the adverse reactions reported to the FDA every year amongst all the food allergens combined. In addition to that, there's over 900 published studies on the health hazards of aspartame. This is very well documented. And you can see the entire list of adverse reactions from aspartame on the National Library Medicine Index. You get that link below. So over 100 side effects can accompany the use of aspartame. So the June 2009 issue of the Clinical Journal of Pain lists aspartame as the food trigger for migraine headaches, noting that many people are sensitive to it. The Center for Science and the Public Interest shows that aspartame consumption can cause neurological problems and if consumed over long periods of time can contribute to cancer risk as well. So commonly reported side effects and adverse reactions of consuming aspartame include headaches, changes in vision, sleep problems and insomnia, hallucination, memory loss, nausea and vomiting, dizziness or poor equilibrium, hives, changes in mood, convulsions and seizures, changes in heart rate, abdominal pain and cramps, rashes, fatigue and weakness, diarrhea and joint pain. But the biggest concern with aspartame is its connection to cancer risk. After aspartame's approval in diet soda in 1983, over 1 million pounds of aspartame was consumed. In 1984, brain cancer rates increased more than for any other type of cancer. And according to the National Cancer Institute, in 1985, there was a 10% increase in brain cancer rates over and above the previous last two years. You know, there's a, there's a correlation there that that just happens to be timed with when aspartame was introduced into the market just two years prior. So that's just so scary to me. I mean, I just, I just can't. And also just as alarming is the evidence that women of childbearing age were delivering more babies with brain and spinal cord cancer. So what is going on here? So aspartame breaks down into three different compounds phenylalanine, aspartic acid, and methanol. And so methanol itself breaks down into formaldehyde, and formaldehyde is a known carcinogen in humans. So if you've been eating aspartame for years and you wanna know more about it, you wanna do a deep dive, I created an awesome video, you can check it out right here, called Is Aspartame Bad For You? So my advice would be to avoid artificial sweeteners like aspartame, like Splenda, like NutraSweet, like Sucralose, they're more toxic than actual table sugar. But why use artificial sweeteners when the safety clearly has not been demonstrated? There's lots of research that shows that artificial sweeteners like aspartame are not good for your health. So if you must use a sugar substitute, use safe natural alternatives like stevia. This is one of my favorite ones. I use uh, liquid stevia. You can also use Lakanto, which is monk fruit. That's also fantastic. You can also use erythriol, which is an alcohol sugar. Some people don't tolerate that well. It can cause loose stools. But these are the three sugar substitutes that I believe are safe. I've done research on this for over 10 years. If you wanna watch a video I did, you can click the link uh, right above here to my video, it's Safe Natural Sweeteners. So many trying to get off sugar want to have their cake and eat it too, but there's a little bit more to the story than that. So generally you reach for an artificial sweetener to you know, control your weight, maybe you're diabetic, maybe you're trying to control a sugar addiction and get rid of your sweet tooth. However, it's not that simple. The reality is that artificial sweeteners do not accomplish these health goals and they cause other health issues along with their consumption. If you wanna try reducing your sugar cravings, just reach for some fruit, reach for some bananas, uh, some pineapples, some berries. And so you'll get some natural sugars, and abolish that sugar craving, and you'll get lots of fiber and nutrients as well, antioxidants and uh, vitamins and minerals. Uh, that's a much, much better way to control your sugar cravings. So if you're trying to turn to artificial sweeteners to control a sweet tooth, it's not going to work because they're super, super sweet. It's gonna backfire you and continue that sugar addiction because they're very sweet. 
So it only takes three weeks to completely get rid of all your sugar cravings. So you just have to go cold turkey and have a total abstinence of any sweet tasting food in order to kick a sugar habit. I know it's tough, but there's programs out there that can help you, you know, kick your sugar addiction, but it takes three weeks. So if you feel like you can't do that, just reach for a piece of fruit instead. Remember all things in moderation. If you need help with a sugar detox to ditch sugar for good, check out my five day sugar detox below. It's a free e-guide. You just sign up for that and download it immediately. It's a fantastic little program to help you get off that blood sugar roller coaster. And if you like this video, please subscribe to more of my videos and click that notifications button below. So thanks for tuning in. I'm Wendy Myers. Thank you.